So today's review is on the Legend of Korra art book. Uh, it's for Book One Air, the art of the animated series. It's published by Dark Horse, who I mostly know for publishing um, comic books, but they've also done a number of really nice uh, art books. And uh, it's written by uh, the creators of the show, Michael DiMartino and Brian Kinetsko, uh, as well as Joaquin DeSantos, who is um, a director or maybe an art director, I'm not sure. Um, so Avatar The Last Airbender is one of my favorite TV series of all time, not just uh, cartoon series or anything like that, just one of the best uh, series of all times, one of my favorite uh, worlds, stories, pieces of fiction of all time. I really, really love it. So I was very excited when um, they released an art book for, for The Last Airbender. Um, unfortunately, it was all three seasons in one book whereas with Korra there are four art books it gets one each season which is really really nice so this is for obviously the art book for the first season so you're going to see a lot of or well, you would hope to see a lot of development stuff but just to go back to that page, this is the first page of Korra. So you get a couple of, you know, early images of Korra where she looks really different, but there's not really anything. I mean, this says early development, but it sort of jumps into straight away the Korra we're familiar with. You know, she basically looks the same, same color scheme and everything, and I wonder if maybe that's how the series actually developed, if she sort of, you know, those first designs were really close to what ended up being the final design, or, and then even with all the other characters, there's nothing r except, you know, these two drawings here, not much, like, exploration of what the, of what the, the characters might have been, if not, you know, the way they actually turned out. Um, so that was disappointing. Um, this book has got a lot of really, really positive reviews from other people. Um, and I think maybe they are confusing their enthusiasm for the show with this being a really great art book. So I'm definitely in the minority when I say that um, even though I really, really love the show I'm, and I really loved the, the um, Last Airbender art book, I didn't really like this art book. I mean, it's certainly okay. It's fine. It's, it's, it's really good. I enjoy reading it, but I expected just so much more. The, it's mostly character designs and things in their in their final form the, and these sort of like you know the um uh facial expression um uh designs to show how, how characters look in different expressions and then there's plenty of environment art but i don't know i just feel like there's something missing and I'm not sure what it is I, I I don't know if that's that's the the quality of their their selection the, the the choices they made to include in this book or if it was just the overall um, uh, art direction for the show but I just felt a little bit uh, let down by it but having said that uh, as a as a fan of the show, it is still, you will definitely get a kick out of it. Um, 
something I really liked about the book was that the chapters, it goes um, episode by episode, which I think is really cool. So you can sort of um, use this book and then sit down with it while you're watching the show uh, and, you know, find the episode you're watching and get some really, um, you know, nice development and then uh, insight into the design decisions. So there's um, uh, comments on pretty much every page by uh, the three authors, the, and they are, here, oh, so I'll just pick this one at random. Um, this is by Michael DiMartino. A statue honoring Fire Lord Zuko stands outside Central City Station, designed by Brian Konetsko and Jin Sun Kim. So, that's just sort of st stating what it is, rather than giving any sort of insight. What else? Let's see down here. Brian and I seem to have an avatar tradition, tradition of dressing our characters in ridiculous costumes and giving them fake facial hair, like we did for Bolin in his street performer costume. And then Brian says, uh, I think this is my favourite of Pabu's many costumes. Something about the lime green next to his red fur is really appealing. Bolin and Pabu's costume design by Il Kwang Kim. So just from those comments, I, I, when I read through this book I seem to remember it being a bit more um, <laughs> uh, insightful, but um, those perhaps were just poor. I chose poor comments because let's try again. Lightning Bolt Zolt is the head of the Triple Threat Triad and the first I have and the first to have his bending taken by Amon. Brian and I think that Marco probably learned his lightning skills from his former boss. Mm. So I don't know. Even even the the, the comments and things. They, you know, these are comments from the creators of the show and yet they're not really that insightful. A lot of them are very superficial. Let's have a look and see if they say anything about um, In the opening scene, Marco, Bolin and Cora practiced pro-bending in a triangle formation which foreshadowed their love triangle. Storyboard panels by blah blah blah. See, that's, I mean... Is that really interesting? I don't know. I don't, I, coming from the, the creators, I don't think that's terribly insightful. So you're going to get tons of stuff like this throughout um, all three books. Just, all four books, sorry. Uh, just, you know, final images of characters in different sort of costumes and their face. I think this is a very typical sort of, of what to expect from these books. Um, and not very many um, uh, storyboards either. Lots of uh, environmental art in in this sort of style. Um, I don't know. I, I love the show. I love the world. Uh, and but I just couldn't help but feel a little disappointed by this book. So if you are, you know, a crazy mega avatar fan, which I am, I still recommend you get this book. You're gonna enjoy it. Um, just, um, I would suggest that you, you know, keep your, um, <laughs> expectations low, perhaps, and you might get more of a kick out of it. Um, but it could have been, uh, significantly improved by greater insight, greater variety of, of images, particularly when you get into the, um, the later uh, two books, book three and four, you really get the sensation that you're seeing some of the same stuff over and over again. At least the layout of the images is really nice. They didn't waste any space. This is a nice chapter as well, the ancillary art. This is just sort of things like, like uh, I think that's for the, the DVD. 
Uh, um, yes, the DVD cover, and then you get, which is really cool to see all the different uh, poster art and DVD covers, and then sort of like um, more kind of fan art, even though a lot of it is, in fact, I think all of it is by the creators of the show, people and other people at Nickelodeon. Definitely my favorite section. And all of the art is uh, credited, which is really nice. So you can find some of the artists online and look through their galleries and work, which is really nice. Um, yeah, so the other thing that I very superficially didn't like, not a big fan of this cover either. I think, I don't think it really um, expresses the tone of the show, nor the sort of, you know, art of um, um, feeling. Uh, so I would say this, uh, the first book is probably, I would say, three and a half stars, which, I mean, might not sound too bad, but that's coming from someone, you know, who was a, I might be judging it a bit harsh, but that's from someone who was a um, big fan of the show, and perhaps expected a little more insight and a little more variety.